Hi students, welcome. In this video, we will be learning about the communication interface of embedded systems. Communication interface are usually designed to a specific standard that enables one machine to telecommunicate with another machine. Communication interface is essential for communicating with various subsystems of the embedded system and with the external world. For an embedded product, the communication interface can be viewed in two different perspectives. The first one is onboard communication interface, second one is external communication interface. Onboard communication interface refers to the different communication channels for interconnecting the various integrated circuits and other peripherals within the embedded system. Second one, external communication interface refers to the different communication channels used by the embedded system to communicate with the external world. So one perspective is within the embedded system, second perspective is with the external world. Examples for onboard communication interface are serial interfaces like I2C, SPI, UART, one wire, etc. and also the uh, parallel bus interface. And for external, uh, we have RS-232C, RS-485, USB, IEEE-1394, these are the uh, wired uh, interface, whereas wireless uh, includes infrared, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, Zigbee, GPRS, etc. So let us see one by one all these interfaces uh, and uh, studying about the examples for each. The first one is the onboard communication interfaces. So in that, the first one example is inter-integrated circuit. That is I2C bus. The I2C, why the name I2C is that uh, uh, it is pronounced, I is pronounced two times and hence it is uh, I2C bus. So uh, I2C is a serial protocol for two wire interface to connect low speed devices like microcontroller, A2D and D2A converters, input output interfaces and other similar, similar uh, peripherals in embedded systems. It was invented by Philips and now it is used by almost all major IC manufacturers. Uh, the I2C bus comprises of uh, two bus lines, that is serial clock and serial data. Serial clock, SCL line, it is responsible for generating synchronization clock pulses, whereas the serial data is responsible for transmitting the serial data across devices. Devices connected to the I2C bus can act as either master or slave. So as we all know, master is responsible for controlling the communication by initiating or terminating data transfer, sending data and generating necessary synchronization clock pulses, whereas the slave wait for the commands from the master and respond upon the receiving of the commands. The master and slave devices can act, uh, act as either transmitter or receiver. So the regardless uh, whether a master is acting as a transmitter or receiver, the synchronization clock signal is generated by the master device only. So the diagram shows here the connection of the master and the slave devices on the I2C bus. So we can see the master and as well as the slave 1 and slave 2. So the I2C bus is SCL and SDA along with the resistors that is we call it as it is called as a pull up resistors 2.2k is used uh, we'll discuss uh, how this data transfer uh, is done in the next slides so the i2c bus supports three different data rates uh, the standard mode fast mode and high speed mode standard mode supports uh, data rate up to 100 k bits per second fast mode supports uh, 400 k bits per second high speed mode uh, supports 3.4 megabits per second so let us see how for these operations that is how the sequence of operation is done in the i2c bus so the first one the um, pull up resistors 2.2k is used to make the output lines high uh, which makes it as a idle condition so in the idle condition the sda and scl will be in the high state okay the second one in order to start the condition in order to start the data transfer so the sda should be low and scl should be in the high condition that is uh, the master device pulls the clock line of the bus to high the master device pulls the data line low next the master device sends the read or write bit that is for read bit value is 1 
that is for read operation bit value is equal to 0 for write operation so according to the requirement uh, the master device sends the value so here we are sending for the write operation the master device sends the address that it might be of 7 bit of the slave device to which it wants to communicate over the SDA line clock pulses are generated at the SCL line for synchronizing the bit reception by the slave device next the slave device with the address requested by the master device responds by sending an acknowledgement bit over an SDA line upon receiving the acknowledgement bit the master device sends the 8-bit data to the slave device over a SDA line if the requested operation is write to device. The master device waits for the acknowledgement bit from the device upon byte transfer complete for a write operation and sends an acknowledgement bit to the slave device for a read operation. So here we are doing only the write operation. The master device terminates the transfer by pulling the SDA line high when the clock line SCL is at the logic high. So this stops the transfer that is stops the condition. So these are the uh, sequence of operations which are involved in transfer of data using the I2C bus. The next example for onboard interface is the serial peripheral interface SPI bus. The SPI is a synchronous serial communication interface specification used for short distance communication mainly in embedded systems. Uh, the concept of SPI was introduced by Motorola. The SPI is a single master multi-slave system. There can be a more than one master but only one master device can be active at, at any given point of time. The SPI requires uh, four signal lines for communication. They are uh, the master route slave in MOSI, master in slave out MISO, serial clock S clock, slave select SS. MOSI is a signal line carrying the data from master to the slave device. MISO is a signal line carrying the data from slave to the master device. S clock is a signal line carrying the clock signals. SS is a signal line for slave device select. So it is an active low signal. So if there are uh, n number of slaves, so this signal will help in selecting the slave. So the diagram helps us to see about the interface between the master and the slave devices on an SPI bus. So there are uh, three lines that is MOSI signal, SCL, MISO and SS1 and SS2 are the slave select. So here we are using two slaves and hence only two select slaves. So we will see how this uh, data transmission is done in SPI bus in the next slides. So the steps for the SPI data transmission are in the first step the master outputs the clock signal. The second step the master switches the SS pin to a low voltage state since it is uh, active low so which activates the slave. Third step the master sends the data one bit at a time to a slave along the MOSI line. The slave reads the bits as they are received. Fourth step, if a response is needed, the slave returns data one bit at a time to the master along the MISO line. The master reads the bits as they are received. So the SPA works on the principle of shift registers. So if you observe the steps which is involved, the master and the slave devices contains a special shift register for the data to transmit and receive. So in summary, we can say that they form a circular buffer. So when compared to the I2C bus, the SPA bus is more suitable for applications requiring transfer of data, which is in streams. The only limitation of the SPI is that uh, it doesn't support an acknowledgement mechanism as uh, it's supported in the I2C. So 